in this problem we have a 3 meters long steel shaft that we need in order to transmit 0.75 megawatts of power at 120 revolutions per minute. We have the material properties, we have that the tau max is equal to 45 megapascals, g of the steel is equal to 79.6 gigapascals and the density of the material is 7.8 to the power times 10 to the power of positive 3 kilograms per meter square. So in the first case we have to find what is the minimum radius uh, of this shaft if it is solid. In the second case we have to find the minimum radius if the shaft is hollow and we have the relationship that R1 should be equal to R2 divided by 2 and finally we have to compare the weight for both designs so we have to decide which one is better so first of all we don't know how much is the torque that we need to apply so this is the first thing that we need to calculate what is the torque we already know that power it's equal to the torque times the speed or rotation. So from this equation, we can calculate what is the torque T that we need to transmit. Then from this equation, we have that the torque is equal to power divided by speed of rotation. The power that we need to transmit is equal to uh, 0.75 megawatts, so 10 to the power of 6 watts divided by the speed of rotation but in this case in order to uh, be consistent with the units this must be given in radius, radians per second so in this case we have 120 revolutions per minute we multiply times 2 pi in order to have radians and we divide by 16 order to have seconds and from here we have that the total torque is equal to 59.7 kilonewtons meter now we have all the information that we need in order to calculate what is the radius of the solid shaft so question a solid shaft we have that this is the free body diagram this is the shaft, so we are applying a torque here like this, and the section is solid, so we need basically to calculate where is our S, R of the shaft. So this radius will be given by the maximum shear stress, because we already know that the maximum shear stress occurs at the maximum radius. So then we can use the torsion formula, which says that the torque divided by the polar moment of inertia is equal to the stress divided by R. So in this case, we have here the maximum stress. Of course, we have here the maximum radius, which is the radius of the, of the shaft. Then we can solve here. We need to know first what is the polar moment of inertia. So we have that the polar moment of inertia is equal to pi halves times the radius to the power of 4 so if we substitute here in this formula we have that the torque which is equal to 59 to the power 59.7 sorry to the power of 3 divided by the polar moment of inertia by halves times rs to the power of 4 is equal to the maximum shear stress that is given in the statement of the problem 45 to the power of 6 pascals divided by the radius of the shaft so from this formula we are going to obtain uh, three different solutions so we take of course the positive one and from here if we solve we find that the radius is equal to 0 0.0945 meters so this is the minimum radius if the shaft is solid 
now we can solve the problem in the case that the shaft is hollow so now we have that the cross section is different we have here our inner the inner radius and we have our s which is the outer radius of the shaft which is the one that we have to calculate then again we can use the torsion formula we have the the torque divided by the polar moment of inertia is equal to the uh, shear stress divided by the uh, radius well, once again we have that the maximum shear stress it is found at the maximum radius so this is our s but in this case uh, this formula remains the same but uh, the polar moment of inertia is different so we need to calculate what is the polar moment of inertia for this section and we have that uh, the polar moment of inertia is equal to pi over 2 divided by 2 uh, times r s to the power of 4 minus r inner to the power of 4 then now we need to have this equation only as a function of uh, r s so we can now use here uh, the relationship which says that um, the inner radius is equal to the radius of the shaft divided by 2 so if we apply this relationship here we have that is equal to pi halves rs square minus rs divided by 2 so this is to the power of 4 to the power of 4 and if we uh, rearrange this equation and we calculate we have that this is equal to 1 point 473 r2 or rs sorry to the power of 4 so we can now substitute here this result and this is the equation that we have we have again that the torque is equal to 59.7 times 10 to the power of positive 3 divided by this 1.473 times rs to the power of 4 and this is equal to 45 times 10 to the power of 6 divided by rs so now as we did before we can solve this equation for s we take the positive result and rs is equal to 0.0966 meters so this is the outer radius if the shaft is hollow and of course from this equation we can easily obtain that the inner radius is equal to the outer one divided by 2 so this is equal to 0 0.0483 meters now we can do the comparison of both designs so we have here comparison we can divide the weight of the hollow shaft by the weight of the solid one so this is equal to the density rho times the volume and the volume is l times the area of the hollow shaft same here rho times l times area of the solid shaft we have same density we have same length so this is basically a ratio of areas so in the first case in the first case this is equal to pi rs in the hollow case minus r inner to the power of 2 divided by pi rs in the solid case to the power of 2 so finally we have that this is equal to then this is the final result and from here we can see that the solid shaft is always uh, heavier 
than the hollow one. And this is something that we could expect because if you look at the torsion formula, we have that the maximum shear stress is equal to the torque times the radius, the, the outer one, divided by the polar moment of inertia. So for a given constant torque, this is a function of R and this is a function of R s to the power of 4 minus the inner radius to the power of 4. So basically what we, we have here, and of course the solid shaft is a limit case in which the inner radius is equal to 0. So we can see here that the larger this value of r, the smaller needs to be the difference between r s and the inner radius. So we have that for a larger RS, in order to have the same maximum shear stress, we have that RS square minus the inner radius square, this amount decreases. And of course, if the area decreases, the final weight of the structure also decreases. And from here we have the nice result that when the radius tends to infinity the weight of the structure is equal to zero.